Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Today we're going to explore how the Minimax algorithm with alpha beta pruning works with the classic game Connect4. Before we start on the algorithm, let's revisit the basics of Connect4. Connect4 consists of a 6x7 grid, and the goal of the game is to get 4 in a row. Now imagine if we could teach a computer to not just play the game, but to play it with an unbeatable strategy. Minimax is a decision-making algorithm commonly used in two-player turn-based games, including Connect4. The goal of the algorithm is to determine the best move for a player by considering all possible moves and their outcomes. It operates on the principle of minimizing potential loss for the worst-case scenario while maximizing the potential gain for the current player. Minimax involves recursively evaluating game states, creating a tree of possible moves and outcomes, and selecting the move that leads to the best overall result. To learn more about the Minimax algorithm, check out our other video in the description. In the context of Connect4, the Minimax algorithm is not efficient on its own to make decisions quickly during gameplay. This is especially true in the early stages of the game, when there are numerous potential scenarios. As we can see here, all the possible game states cannot fit in this screen. That is because for every move, there are 7 potential moves after that, and 7 more potential moves after that. The number of possible game states increases exponentially as we go further down the tree. Due to computational constraints, the computer can't realistically examine every possible game state and its subsequent moves all the way down to the bottom of the tree every time. But what if we didn't have to explore to the bottom of the tree? When beginning a Connect4 game, the focus isn't necessarily on predicting the game's end from the start. Instead, we might consider the general area where we'd like most of our pieces to be placed. For instance, we might prioritize positions in the middle of the board, as it offers more winning combinations, as compared to edge positions with fewer possibilities. So what if we assigned a weight to each position? Then the algorithm would be more likely to pick positions on the board with higher weights, and less likely to pick positions with lower weights. Instead of exploring all the way to the end, what if the algorithm only explored a depth of 3? The resulting choice may not be the absolute best, but it would still be a reasonable choice. This approach helps balance between exploring the tree comprehensively and making a decision quickly. So how would this work? Once the algorithm explores every potential game state at a given depth, it then determines the value of the game state using the evaluation function. It calculates the total value for each position occupied by the AI player's pieces and subtracts the total value for each position with the opponent's pieces. Subsequently, the algorithm selects the optimal move based on the score associated with that particular game state. Now, let's say we have this game tree. We can see now that we don't have to explore to the bottom of the tree to evaluate the state of the board. Let's run through how Minimax would make a decision at this point in the game. It will first explore the left side of the tree all the way to the bottom. At this level, it is the human player's or minimizing player's turn, so it will choose a smaller value of 4. Then it will go back up the tree and explore the middle of the tree all the way to the bottom. The human or minimizing player will choose the smaller of the two numbers again, which in this case is negative 4. Minimax will do this for the right side of the tree as well, then go back to the top of this tree. At this level, it is the AI player or maximizing player's turn. It has the option between 4, negative 4, and negative 4. And because the AI player is always trying to maximize the score, it chooses 4. So is there a way to speed up the process even further? It's called alpha beta pruning. Alpha beta pruning is a technique used to reduce the number of nodes evaluated in the search tree. It maintains two values, alpha and beta, for each node in the tree. Alpha represents the best score that the maximizing player can achieve so far, and beta represents the best score that the minimizing player can achieve so far. When minimax is enhanced with alpha beta pruning, it will prune or not go down the branches whenever alpha is greater than or equal to beta. This means that the maximizing player already has a better choice in a previous iteration, so it will not waste computational resources and look down that path. Let's walk through the algorithm together. At each level of the tree, just like how we switched between the maximizing and minimizing player's turn, this time we'll also change the values of alpha and beta, depending on which level we are at. At this level, we'll only ever be changing the alpha value, and at this level, we'll only ever be changing the beta value. This would have repeated on and on if we expanded this tree as well. 
At the top of the tree, the algorithm initializes alpha to negative infinity and beta to positive infinity. It pushes these values down to the left side of the tree until it reaches the bottom. It looks at both of the bottom nodes, and since at this point it is the human player or minimizing player's turn, it will choose the smaller of the numbers, meaning that the beta value would change. Between 4 and 7, 4 is a smaller number, so the beta value changes to 4. We then go back up to the tree, and at this level it is the AI player or maximizing player's turn, meaning that the alpha value will change. Right now, it has a choice between negative infinity and 4. Of course, 4 is larger than negative infinity, so the alpha value would change to 4. We'll now go down the middle of the tree and pass down the new alpha and beta values until we're at the bottom of the tree again. It will look at the two on the left, and since this level is the human player, or minimizing player's turn, the beta value will change to 2, since 2 is smaller than infinity. Notice here that alpha is now greater than beta which means that there is no need to look at the rest of the options. That is because at this level, min gets to choose, which means that min will never choose a number that is larger than 4, when it already has a smaller option of 2. So we don't need to look down the rest of this tree, and we can safely prune this branch to save on computation power. We can now go back to the top of the tree, where it is the AI player or maximizing player's turn, meaning that the alpha value will change. It has the option of 4 and 2, and since 4 is greater than 2, the value for alpha will remain 4. We'll then pass the alpha and beta values to the right side of the tree, then take a look at the left side and find a negative 4. Since it is min's turn at this level, we can change the beta value to negative 4. Here again we find that the alpha value is greater than the beta value, so we can safely prune this branch to save on computation time. We then go back to the top of the tree again. We are back to the AI player or maximizing player's turn, meaning that the alpha value will change. It has a choice between 4 and negative 4, and since 4 is not greater than 4, the alpha value will remain the same. Since it is the AI player or maximizing player's turn at the top of the tree, it will pick the path that leads it to the alpha value of 4, which would be this branch here. Remember that this is the path that resulted in an alpha value of 4 for the current level, the alpha value may be different at the next level of the tree, as we saw previously. You will notice that the path it chooses and the value that the algorithm ends up with are the same with what we got originally when we went through the minimax algorithm. As you can see, alpha beta pruning saves computation time by using logic to avoid looking down certain paths, while still maintaining the accuracy of the minimax algorithm. It's worth noting that in some cases, alpha beta pruning may not prune any branches at all. This happens when the scores at the bottom of the tree are sorted from the least to best score for the current player. That forces the algorithm to not be able to prune any branches. On the other hand, the algorithm will prune the most branches when the bottom of the tree is sorted from the best to worst score for the current player. In the best case scenario, alpha beta pruning should be able to prune half of the branches, making it two times faster than the minimax algorithm. And with that, we come to the end of our video on the minimax algorithm with alpha beta pruning. Today, we learned how to apply minimax to games like Connect4, how to create an evaluation function to speed up the decision process and have the algorithm choose a move that is good enough, and how to speed up the minimax algorithm even further by enhancing it with alpha beta pruning. For a selection of minimax projects, please refer to the links in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.